Hey guys, we went to Beware the Awakening to a prison pit featuring our Dadan Sparse from Pod Evolve with a dig away flash attack, doing 100 damage for 4 colorless while paralyzing your opponents active, shuffling this Pokemon and all attached cards back into your deck. With our Zatu for the energy acceleration and draw support, one Mimikyu to wall against our opponent's Pokemon EX and Pokemon V, one Snorlax to do big damage with Thumping Snore, one Dedene to collect the knockout with second bite, hitting 30 base damage, plus 10 more for each damage counter opponent's active Pokemon. With our regular trainers for the setup, one Lost Vacuum to counter Ancient Booster Energy Capsule, one Beach Court for Mimikyu with two switches for Snorlax, one Miriam to cycle back our Pokemons, one Boss for Power Play, three Double Turbo and one Reversal for the Dance Bars with two Fog Crystal, one Earthen Vessel and nine basic Psychic Energies. So that's all for the decklist, now let's go for some gameplay and see how well this deck works. Okay, let's go for our first game with Prison Pit. We got the Dance Bars with the sudden dig flash um i think that's the move that lets you do 100 damage for four colorless which is a lot uh we do have double turbo and one reversal but if we attach a double turbo we're doing only 80 damage plus the paralysis effect though we get to play the paralysis over and over um it's not that easy to loop it just because you need four energies you need to keep evolving the dun sparse if they play a boss, we got no more Dianci. So that's the tricky part. If they get past the Paralysis and play the boss at the same time, which isn't easy though, they need the switch and the boss, and also enough energy on the second attacker. If they switch back, switch retreat back to the same attacker, they just need the boss, right? But anyways, now we're up against Charizard EX with Pidgeot. I'm not sure if they have Entei, I don't think so. I think they're playing Mew EX with Pidgeot. Uh, maybe one be barrel. I'm not sure. Okay, we do have Dianci for this game, but no longer in the final list. In the final build, we decided to just play one Mimikyu, um, one Snorlax from Lost Origin for the big damage, because sometimes we just end up not doing enough damage. Uh, the Dene isn't really helping until we get enough, uh, you know, damage counters on your active. If we don't play the boss at the right time as well if they attack with a new one we have to wait until we have enough damage counters on the charizard or a, uh, you know a basic ex like a chin pow we actually need to hit it twice before we can play our uh, second bite for the knockout against chin pow if we don't play the double turbo we can actually knock it out uh with two hits but if we do the double turbo it would be a lot more difficult so that's the problem with the dance bars is actually not doing enough damage if it's 120 for four colorless it would be um, okay, it would be decent, uh, possibly playable in the meta right now, but just because it's only 100 damage for 4 colorless, it just makes it that much more useless. I mean, we do have reversal, but still, if you don't have the price counter, you, can, you don't get to play it. Uh, if you play too many copies, eventually you're going to draw prizes with your dance bars, eventually you get uh, more price cards or the same number of price cards remaining, and then you can't play reversal anymore. And then you have to attach four psychic energies just to play the constant paralysis effect. Uh, we can actually wall with Mimikyu and attack with it as well, or the Dedene. Uh, that's the reason why we have Snorlax right now, just because it helps us do, uh, you know, it basically gives us the big damage for us to collect the knockout with either the Dedene early game if we don't get enough energies to start, or it helps us patch up the intervals between the first Dedan Sparse, the first. Uh, sudden dig flash with the next attack with the next paralysis right we don't we i don't think it's that easy for us to play the dance bars to attack every single turn to play the paralysis over and over it's honestly way too much of a challenge just because you have to evolve the, the dance bars as well uh re-evolve and reattach all those four energies in a single turn i mean might as well just attack with something else right and wait until you have the right condition to play the same attack again right enough energies the evolution, obviously. We actually have to bench another Dance Bars uh, at the same time, expecting to get Boss on the next turn. They're probably going to target a Zatu though, but we have Miriam to shuffle back our Zatu, which should be fine. Uh, the problem is if they knock out the, the, uh, the Dance Bars before we evolve it, if we have only, uh, you know, if we got the third Dance Bars prize, or if we don't bench the third one while attacking with the first the Dance Bars, then they just need to boss our dance bars to deny us the paralysis on the next turn. If they switch and then play the boss on our dance bars on the bench, 
we're not able to evolve and just because it's a stage 1, we can't play Dig Away Flash on the next turn. So right now we have our Mimikyu walling in the active and they just evolved the Charizard EX for the energies with Infernal Rain. Here comes another Rare Candy for the Pidgeot. Not sure if they actually evolved it stage by stage for the Charizard, but they did Rare Candy for Pidgeot. Um, uh, so they got the Free Search with the EX ability. It's a bit weird that they searched for Charmander though, when they could have just benched it with the Artisan. I mean, they totally wasted the Artisan right there. Oh well. Could have searched for a supporter card or something else. I don't think they need anything else though at, the, at this point. Um, they do need the Charmeleon, right? Eventually they need to evolve it into the stage 1 just to take out our Mimikyu because there's nothing else in play that they can use to hit the Mimikyu. So that's their only bet. Their only hope is the Charmeleon. Or the Radiant Charizard, but Radiant Charizard requires a lot of energies. So if they haven't benched it by now, I don't think they have it inside the deck. They would have benched it with the Pidgeot, right? I think that's what they were going for. Um, and I, it, it would be too late as well because they don't have the Charizard anymore. They need to play uh, Infernal Rain to attach all energies onto the Radiant Charizard just to take out the Mimikyu. And then after that, they got no attackers. So I don't know if that's the right move. Right, to spend all energies on your Radiant Charizard just to have it take, uh, taken out on the next turn. If they don't switch, they can't attack with the Charizard because Combustion Blast doesn't allow you to attack on the next turn. We can paralyze the Radiant Charizard as well with the Dunsparce on the next turn, but we can't do a knockout with one hit. Um, we don't have Snorlax. Even with Snorlax, I don't think it's that easy. Well, Thumping Snore is actually enough though. 160 with Double Turbo is still enough to take out Radiant Charizard in one hit. Um, that's the reason why we have it now, but I feel like maybe we should play Latios. If we play Latios though, uh, which is the same number of damage, we're doing the same damage for Latios as with the Snorlax without the sleep condition. So Snorlax actually falls asleep after playing Thumping Snore. Uh, for 3 colorless, Latios requires you to discard all 3 energies attached to it. So if you have a double turbo on Latios, it's two, uh, the attack cost is 2 psychic and 1 colorless. If you play double turbo, with 2 Psychic Energy, you actually get to discard 1 Turbo and 1 Psychic just to, uh, you know, just to use the attack and then retrieve the energy on the next turn. We don't have Clara, we don't have Retrieval though, that's the reason why we're not going for Latios. I don't think the Dunsparce gets to play that many Retrievals because we want to be searching our deck for constantly searching back the energies just to reattach with our Zatu since we are shuffling back the, the Dunsparce into the deck. Uh, along with all the energies, so I, I don't know. If we play too many Retrievals, it would benefit Latios but not the Dunsparce. If we play too many Fog Crystals, it would benefit the Dunsparce but not Latios. That's the reason why we're not playing it for this deck. We chose Snorlax instead, which has its own downside. Uh, not just going to sleep, but also the heavy retreat costs, which makes uh, Beach Court a lot more difficult to play. That's why we have only one Beach Court now, with two item switches for Mimikyu to retreat uh, or switch back into our the Dunsparce to play our Dig Away Flash over and over again. We can't really switch that many times though, so at some point we're going to have to retreat and discard the energy from Mimikyu. Uh, not playing the Retrieval could actually be really bad, right? No more Clara as well. Miriam is actually really good though, because you're not only shuffling back uh, your Mimikyu, shuffling back your Zatu if they do a boss to knock it out. You're also drawing three cards which allows you to play your ability to draw even more cards for you to use your... Uh, for you to evolve and play Dig Away Flash again. So the Dunsparce shuffling back is actually kind of a bad thing just because eventually you're gonna run out of your supporter cards, eventually you're gonna run out of energies uh, or ways to search for your energy and if you top deck something that you can't use, if you don't top deck an energy, Zatu is not going to help you draw cards, Zatu is not going to help you do anything. Right? It's not going to help you attach energies, there's no energy in your hand, what can you do? So that's the reason we have our energy searches in excess, we got 1 Vessel, 2 Fog Crystal, 9 Basic Psychic Energy now, with 3 Turbo and 1 Reversal, that's a lot of energies. And now for us to satisfy the attack cost for 2 the Dunsparce in a row, or maybe even three if we're lucky. 
If we get the price counter, we can play the reversal and then do double turbo on the next turn before using, you know, before reattaching the reversal again, just because we are cycling back the reversal though. So we could actually play the Dene at some point as well to take out, uh, you know, something with a boss. If they have enough damage controls on your active, we can just second bite for the knockout. And then, you know, while attaching more energies on our bench, done sparse before evolving on the next turn to paralyze them again. Obviously, they're going to do a boss though. If we attack with the Dedene, they would definitely do a boss on any one of our bench, either Zatu or the Dunsparce. Most likely the Dunsparce. If we have only one bench, uh, that's why sometimes it's better to bench two Dunsparce while attacking with your active the Dunsparce. The, 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 the Dunsparce. <laughs> but if you don't have enough copies in play, you may not be able to evolve and use the attack again on the next turn. So it's always something to watch out for. Um, Avery is going to get rotated. I'm so happy for that. No more Avery. We still have Collapse Stadium and Glamora EX, but not many decks run those. So with Avery off the format, it would be a huge relief for one price decks. Because one price decks normally need a lot of support abilities to make it work. In addition to Menafi, Jirachi, stuff like that. Just to, you know, give it extra buffs. Especially decks with low HP basics like Natu, Tender Mouse, you know, all of those um, baby Pokemons with less than 50 HP. Can you imagine being taken out by Iron Valiant? Like, that would be so depressing. It would be so disheartening if you're knocked out before you even get to evolve and do your first attack. That, that kind of sucks because uh, what happens if you have to re-bench the Pokemon and evolve your next one, right? If you bench your mouse hole, for example, if you bench the tender mouse late game or mid game for your next evolution, they're definitely going to take it out with damage counters. If they play Kofagrigus, they can knock you out on the bench with damage counter placements. If they play Iron Valiant, they can play, you can use abilities to knock you out with their damage counters. So if your deck has any baby basics with less than or equal to 50 HP, make sure you play like uh, enough counters against decks against spread decks or multi prize decks that use damage counters to cheat those prizes. So make sure you have stuff like Bravery Charm or Luxurious Cape just to help your baby basics survive long enough for you to evolve because that's all we need. Once we evolve, then we can use our strategies, we can, you know, counter them quite easily. We can deny them the extra knockouts with their bloody damage counters, right? Those annoying spread decks, super, super annoying, as we all know. Uh, there needs to be more ways to deny them those extra knockouts. I mean, there are so many basic Pokemons right now, like Tender Mouse, Natu, Nimble, Solosis, among a few others, which have only 50 or less HP, which is kind of ridiculous. Even 30 HP for Magikarp, there needs to be something to help these Pokemons survive long enough for them to evolve. Like a Stadium card, a special energy, an ability that helps them survive the first couple turns. I mean, it goes without saying, right? Those Pokemons doesn't get to survive an Iron Valiant deck, which makes it very sad, because Iron Valiant equals auto win against decks like that. So it's almost like you don't even get to play those decks anymore for standard. I mean, where there's a will, there's always a way, but there isn't many ways for the moment to keep your baby Pokemons alive long enough for you to evolve and play its first attack. How ridiculous. Especially for pre-evolutions, how do you even play pre-evolutions for your deck? If you want to play Magby or Elakid or something like Clefa in your deck, I don't think you get to use them anymore because they have only 30 HP. How do you even play a 30 HP basic if you're wasting a single prize? You're wasting extra prizes when your opponent plays damage counters to knock you out. How ridiculous is that? There should honestly be a rule or a stadium card at least that denies your opponent from drawing any prize cards if your non rule box basic Pokemon has a max health of 30 or less HP. I mean, that would solve so many problems for this game. That I would be so happy if there's such a card like that. A stadium card though doesn't really cut it. I wish there's a basic Pokemon, a legendary basic with such an ability that denies your opponent prizes if they knock out a Pokemon with. A maximum HP, which means that you don't actually get to play tool cards. If you have a tool card attached, the max HP becomes more than 30, which means the effect doesn't work anymore. So the max HP has to be, if it has 30 HP remaining, 
with a max HP of 220, like a Chen Pao EX. Obviously, it's a rule. It only works for non rule box basics as well. So if it has like 70 max HP and it has 30 HP remaining, if your opponent knocks it out with 30 HP remaining, they still get to draw a prize card for it. But anyways, that's just hypothetical. A very fun hypothetical at that, but still. So anyways, I think I'm just gonna end the voice right here because focus on the game. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Today we are featuring our The Dunsparce back in the game with our Zatu energy system, energy acceleration, and also draw support, helping us attach up to four energies in a single turn with our reversal double turbo to help us uh, charge up up to enough attack to help us attack with our dig away flash for the paralysis effect over and over looping that card back into the uh shuffling that card and all attached cards back into the deck looping our the dance bars for us to put forth our mimikyu in the active to wall with our safeguard blocking all damage from our opponent's uh, EX and v, uh, v Pokemon's attacks, while also paralyzing their active Pokemon over and over non-stop. We can even attack with our Snorlax, doing Thumping Snore for 180 damage for only 3 colorless, going to sleep, flipping 2 coins every single turn during Pokemon checkup for the sleep condition, which is not good, but we have enough switch cards to remove the condition, or if it gets knocked out, we can actually play our Mimikyu on the next turn. We can also attack with our Ghost Eye, placing 7 damage counters on our opponent's active Pokemon with Mimikyu, while walling in the active as well. If we don't get enough energies for us to play the par paralyzed condition, we can still wall with Mimikyu or even attack with Dedene doing second bite, finishing off any Pokemon if they have 16 damage counters on their Charizard EX, for example. We can do the knockout with our Dedene for only one psychic and one colorless. So that's all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Have a great day and bye for me, people. Enjoy life.
Thank you.